After LSU handed Arkansas their first SEC series loss of the year this past weekend, the Diamond Hogs are looking into making some adjustments, starting with their bullpen. LSU was able to take advantage of Arkansas's mistakes Saturday and Sunday, especially on the mound. Saturday starting pitcher Trevor Steffen shined on the bump, holding the Tigers to just two runs over seven innings, but that outing was seemingly wasted. LSU came back and won the game in the ninth. Closer Cannon Chadwick allowed five runs off two hits, with Chadwick struggling in some of his recent outings. Head coach Dave Van Horn is looking into making some changes. Do we have confidence in him to go out and finish a game? I still do, um, but he, he, might, he might have to go out and pitch on Tuesday a little bit, an inning, so we can see what he can do. And, uh, you know, before we throw him in the game on a Thursday night with a, with a tight ball game. And, you know, is he going to stay at the end of the game? Um, could be, but uh, you know his role might be where he comes in and just tries to put out the fire and we move to the next guy. Well, the good news is that rankings this week saw no change for Arkansas despite their series loss to LSU this weekend. The Hog remain at number 15. The Tigers got a boost up though, moving four spots to number nine. They're now the highest ranked SEC team in the top 25. Florida also jumped up five spots. After winning the series against Kentucky this weekend, Mississippi State moves into the rankings. That's seven SEC teams now ranked in the top 25. Arkansas hits the road briefly this week. They'll face Missouri State for a midweek game this Tuesday at 6.35 p.m. Then they'll come back home and face Georgia. The opener against the Bulldogs will be this Thursday. The Arkansas football team is still facing a question that came up last spring, which is who will be the backup for Austin Allen. Spring football is a chance for players to try to compete for those open spots in the first and second string lineup. Last year is Ray PV and Charleston native Ty Story vying for the backup role. This year is still Story, but now Cole Kelly is thrown into the mix. Head coach Brett Bielema thinks so far both are even in the race and is looking for some separation between them soon. They both do some good things and then do some things that aren't so good. And, and um, I do think Ty's playing as, as well as he's played since he's been here today. Wasn't his best day, but he was still pretty good in some things. His command and presence and his composure are always really good. Cole tries to do a lot of things, you know, kind of two different guys uh, that uh, uh, personality wise, but we're trying to get the same results on the field. Arkansas was in a tough situation today in the regional. They had to win the elimination game against Oral Roberts in order to stay alive. Rogers Heritage product Casey Murphy on the mound. He was dealing through the first four innings. Here he gets the K in the second. Scoreless on both sides until the bottom of the fourth. Noah Cummings deep drive all the way to the hog pen. Cummings 15 homer of the year. The Golden Eagles, they lead one to nothing. The next batter up. First pitch, another solo home run. This time it's Brent Williams. The Hogs go to their bullpen and they pick up Josh Alberius and he takes over on the bump. Now two men on for ORU, Sam Grellner, and he singles to center field. Dylan Snipes comes in to score. Golden Eagles, they have a three to nothing lead at this point. Arkansas, though, they're going to answer in the fifth. Jake Arledge doubles down the left field line. That one's going to bring Jared Gates home, and it's 3-1. to one. Golden Eagles still up in this one. Same inning, two on for Eric Cole. Deep shot to center. Arledge and Cook, they come in to score, and it's a tied ball game, folks, at three. Top of the seventh, a pitcher's nightmare. Someone who you don't want to see at the plate, Chad Spamberger. And he hits a moonshot to right. Way out for the first lead of the game for Arkansas. Spamberger's homer was huge for Arkansas, but the relief pitching seals the win. Jake Rental right there with the K to end the game. Arkansas wins 4-3. to three. The Diamond Hogs show grit and survive in advance, sending Oral Roberts home. The Golden Eagles season ends with a 43-15 and 15 overall record. Here's what Arkansas head coach Dave Van Horn had to say about Spamberger's bomb that won the game thing it's not who hit it it's that it gave us the lead and it gave us an opportunity to try to find a way to get nine more outs with a lead and uh, you know I just thought our pitchers did a great job and you know Missouri State got it was with home runs last night and Oral Roberts got the lead on us with home runs today and they're kind of you know, doing what we've been doing to people, and it was nice to get one. The Boston Red Sox were taking on the Baltimore Orioles today. Boston trying to complete the sweep against the Orioles, and they were able to do so with the help of a former Razorback. 
The Orioles lead 3-2 at the top of the third. That is until Andrew Benintendi steps up at the plate. Benintendi with a solo home run to right off of Tillman, and that one ties the game at three. Top of the seventh, 5-3 Red Sox. Benintendi again, his second home run of the day, a solo homer to right off Mike Wright. Top of the ninth now, and you guessed it, Benintendi continues his amazing game. Hits an RBI single to right that scores Mookie Betts. Benintendi went two for three for the play today with two RBIs, helping the Red Sox win 7-3. The Arkansas women's track and field team came into the final day at Hayward Field as fourth overall. The Hogs were aiming to finish strong in order to win their second straight NCAA outdoor title. The Razorbacks were hoping to defend their national title coming into the final day. They already had 11.20 points from the Hogs pole vaulting trio, but the lead would elude them today. Nikki Hiltz was the highlight for the Hogs in day two. Hiltz finished second in the 1500 in the 1500 meter, giving Arkansas eight points. Harper finished fourth in the 400 and Brooks and Brown finished fourth and third in the heptathlon finals, adding 11 points for the Hawks. Well, taking a look at the final results, Oregon and Georgia were neck and neck for the outdoor crown. The Ducks fought back in the 4 by 4 winning that event to ultimately win the national title. Georgia finished right behind them with 62.2 points. Arkansas wasn't able to build off their strong start but they still finish in the top 10, earning the sixth place overall spot in the NCAA Outdoor Championship. But to show you how tough the competition was, Arkansas was just 4.9 points away from that third place trophy. After their rough 2016 season, the Arkansas baseball team was not pegged to accomplish all that they have this season, and the Razorbacks have no plans of backtracking as they look ahead to a bright future. It's a period of time that Arkansas baseball and fans will never forget. The 2016 campaign saw the Diamond Hogs flounder to just 26 and 19 overall and in just 7 and 23 in the SEC play. But instead of letting that season define them, Arkansas overcame that rough spot to power to 4 40 plus wins in an NCAA tournament appearance this year. Catcher Grant Cook says their comeback mentality is what led them to their successful season. We kind of labeled ourselves as, as team overcome and, and you know when adversity hit, you know, especially this year, we kind of said we're not going to take the route we took you know the past year and, and that it's just it's going to be different and you know we liked when adversity hit because you know we were that team that was that was going to overcome it so we kind of labeled ourselves as that and you know it helped us you know get through it and that's that's why we were as good as we were and just to get it you know back rolling and back on track and that's why we're so confident for next year. Well after going 0-7 on their first road trip the St. Louis Cardinals have returned home and are finding success back at Bush Stadium against the Phillies. Going into the bottom of the fourth no score cars Jed Jerko smashes a two RBI double to right center that one scores Dexter Fowler and Stephen Biscotti two to nothing cards same inning 3-0 now Eric Fryer adds to the Redbirds lead RBI single left field makes it four to nothing Cardinals seventh now and it's Matt Carpenter doing great at the plate again hits a two RBI double to right center off Gomez the cards score three runs in just the seventh inning final score the Cardinals they shut out the Phillies today winning seven to nothing they'll seek the sweep tomorrow at 1 15 p.m. The Kansas City Royals are on the road today facing the Padres. Top of the six, Royals down 4-1, to one, but Lorenzo Cain grooves one out to left for a solo shot. Cain's fifth long ball of the season, and that will ignite the Royals offense. Top of the eighth now, Royals still down 5-3, to three, but Eric Hosmer takes the pitch from Brad Hand out to left field, and it carries over the wall for a two-run bomb. That ties the game at five. Later in the inning, it's Kane. He continues his hot streak at the plate, crushes one deep to left off Jose Valdez, and it finds the seats for a grand slam. All right, thanks, Garrett. The Arkansas baseball team has been explosive offensively throughout the SEC tournament. Tournament, and they carried that into the semifinal round today against number one seeded Florida, but it was the Hogs that looked like the top seeded team in Hoover. The Razorbacks facing the Gators for the first time this season. First inning, Chad Spamberger at the plate. He has been ruthless all tournament and he continues his dominance today. Top of the first, a double burger, knocks it into the trees for the two run bomb, his 18th homer of the season. Still in the first, it's going to be a bases loaded situation for Jack Spiggers. Hits to the right side two run single to put Arkansas up four to nothing on the board and this is just the first frame guys same score same inning still no outs yet for the Hogs Grant Cook at the plate sack fly to bring home Carson Shaddy to make it five to nothing Arkansas 
Going into the top of the seven, Arkansas is still dominant, and it's going to be Spamberger back at the plate. He smashes the ball to the Gators' bullpen. That solo shot for the slugger, and you can't forget about the pitcher. Casey Murphy was spectacular on the mound today for the Hogs. Here he gets the strikeout. He would throw a complete game today. He gave up just two hits while striking out eight. Final score in Hoover, the Hogs send home the Gators, winning 16 to nothing in the seventh inning. Arkansas advances to their first SEC title game since 2007. The man of the hour obviously was Chad Spamberger. Here's his interview with SEC Network's Laura Rutledge after the game about what his teammates and rival players have to say about his performance during the tournament. I mean, I had Eric today. I was like, I mean, is this like a showcase for you or something? Like, I'm like, I don't know what's happening. It's just coming out and playing, I guess. What about guys from other teams? You're getting a lot of respect from all these opponents. Yeah, uh, I think uh, Rooker last night is like, he's like, you hit a double, you slumping, slumping or something? I'm like, <laughs> I mean, that's big coming from him, somebody like him. So. Next, Arkansas will face LSU in the SEC championship game tomorrow at 3 o'clock p.m. The Western Division rivals know each other pretty well, to say the least. The last time they played each other, LSU took two games out of the best of three series. That was back in April. As for Arkansas's SEC championship game opponent, LSU also dominated in their semifinal game today. They blasted past South Carolina to reach the title game. LSU versus South Carolina, the Tigers trying to reach their third SEC championship game in five years. Top the first, Kramer Robertson at the plate, knocks the third pitch of the game way out, solo shot, and that will ignite the Tigers' offense. LSU would go on to add two more runs in the second off three hits, and then they were even more explosive in the third inning scoring six runs off six hits and on the mound Jared Poche dominated on the defensive side of things holding the Gamecocks two for 24 from the plate through six innings earning his 37th career win. LSU mercy rules the Gamecocks today shutting them out 11 to nothing in seven innings and they will advance to those finals. Twice already this year they've gone to bed at night knowing they were waking up to play for a championship. It was twice in Starkville, once for the SEC West and then the second time for the overall SEC title. And now this will be their third time, you know, and it, that can't help uh, hurt, but I mean, that can't, that can't do anything but help you as far as when we get to the NCAA tournament. Hopefully there'll be bigger championships to win.